Hey guys, welcome back to another MFF episode, and I'm here at a typical size spring creek on the Driftless. And I was doing some filming and fishing today, and I wanted to make a little bit of hybrid of the adventure, but show you guys some nymphing tactics and kind of how to do some basic nymphing in the Driftless. Baptize me in a bottle of beam for Johnny on the vine. Well, the devil can't scrap what the Lord has won. The Driftless region, we have what you guys. If you guys fished here before, you guys can know that a lot of our creeks are small. We have some bigger, bigger rivers that guys like a streamer fish and float, myself included. Um, there's even bigger rivers for nymphing and stuff we have. But I would say 90% of majority of our creeks here are, I don't know, about 20 foot in width at the average or less. Some being just as wide as about a tailgate of a truck, if not less, even more. And they can still hold a lot of fish in that tiny water. So because of this, I like to use a eight foot rod. It's kind of the standard here. A lot of guys use an eight foot four weight. I have what Scott makes called the G series right here. And I'll show you a little bit more of a close up on it. But this is a five weight, but it's a seven seven. It has a really soft action, meaning it'll bend fairly easily, not as stiff as a fast action rod. So it's more of a hybrid between a five and a four. Um, it feels a lot lighter than a typical five weight. In my opinion, for the best, for for the, anything you can buy in the drift, this is the best nymphing rod because you can throw a little bit heavier rigs with it. I know companies like the Echo Lift, that's also, they make a good starter combo. Or if it's Recon, it's got three weight. There's all sorts of companies. But in my opinion, you gotta get a shorter four or five weight or a three weight. But if you're gonna do more nymphing, I'd prefer a five or a four. Line, you want something a little bit heavier head that can throw over. I use Rio Gold. It's not typically known for just a strictly nymphy nine, but I like it a lot. It roll casts really nice. The roll cast is gonna be your friend a lot in the driftless, which if you guys fished it, you know that. I mean, in open fields like this, when uh, you kinda can't approach the fish as well and like spookier pools, you definitely can whip out a 10-2 and do some casts. But again, I would say 60, 70% of the time, if you're just nymphing or dry fly fishing, a lot of times you're gonna do roll casts because it's just so easy and it's so effective and you're not getting snags or tangles nearly as much as you would be with 10 to, especially when it gets windy here, which we've had a lot of windy weather the last couple weeks here in April. I love to use the airlock foam indicators. Now I might get some hate for this, and this is we're not doing a Euro nymphing video, so for the guys that say they like more stealth, this is not a Euro nymphing, this is just a kind of a standard American driftless nymphing. And I really like these indicators, the airlock makes them. I'll show another picture of them. Um, the Oros make like a one that goes, it splits open and goes on the middle. I think they're a little bit better casting, but when you're using lighter line, like right now, which I'll go to my, I'll talk about my leader. When you're using lighter line, they kind of slip a lot more. And these airlocks have these rubber gaskets on them. And I really do like them. They come in white, red, or pink and orange. I like to use white when the fish were getting a little bit more spooky because it really just blends in like a bubble. Um, if not, you know, like on a day like today where it's kind of a little bit cloudier and stuff, you can get away with orange or uh, pink, especially for people who don't have the best eyesight. It helps a lot seeing that visual aid. And essentially when we're using these nymphing rigs, it's just like a big bobber. People all get in the way of all oh, it's fly fishing, really just using a bobber. It detects the strike and guys that don't use one don't want to be here. Unless, like I said, you're Euro nymphing and using the type of leader, it really helps to have the indicator. I seriously recommend it. Next, we're going to talk about leaders. I'll show on what I use for my leaders. I like a seven and a half foot, but sometimes you can't always find them on the, in the fly shops, depending on where you're at. So then I prefer to go to, a, I'll have to go to a nine foot, but seven and a half is a lot better because you don't really need as much stealth when you're nymphing. Um, unless you're doing a dry dropper ridge, which I'll talk about later, you really wanna just go with a seven and a half foot. It's the best way to go. It makes handling the line a lot better on the roll cast, having that shorter leader. We're not in out west doing miraculous cast out to rising rainbows on the Galantine or the Madison. No, we're, we're doing roll casts and riffles and runs. So I think a seven and a half foot's the way to go. And for tippet size, um, if the water's really dirty and you're fishing some heavier nymphs, I'll go 4X. Particularly I like to stick with 5X and 6X. I'll go to 6X when the water gets more clear later in the year. Earlier in the year I like to stick with 5X. That extra strength of line when the water is higher and the fish can use the current more. The one thing I would recommend is you're fishing on like a hot day where the fish fighting them in really quickly is important for their survival, then I would step up back to a 5X or 4X, especially if you know you're gonna be getting to bigger fish and you know you're catching and releasing. Because if you use 6X and you let that fish fight really hard on a warm day, you're gonna maybe kill that fish. So that's one thing I'd recommend, but yep, typically four through 6X is the way to go here for nymphing and the drift list. 
Now I'm gonna show some flies. I'm gonna go to my fly box. Um, I got a lot of flies I like to use, but really, there's probably about, depending on the time of the year, three or four at times a year I like to use. I'm gonna talk about April right now and May because this is what we're, this is the season I'm fishing and this is what people would be relevant to now. Um, earlier in April when we had the mayflies, I really like anything that imitates a mayfly, a hare's ear, a pheasant tail, or a copper jar. Those are gonna be your big three representations. It seems like a copper jar will get down more on a day where maybe the fish aren't rising as much or tailing. Um, it's a good attractant pattern more. Uh, I like the pheasant tail and hares ears more when the fish do see some surface activity, but you're not really getting them to take dries. Uh, you can swing it a lot. You can also make a soft tackle pheasant tail, which I like a lot. Those are kind of my big three for the mayfly imitations. And then moving into May, which we did get some hotter weather a couple weeks ago, I saw a bit of it, is we'll get caddis. And I like the, this uh, Lund's Flash that makes a kinney bug or they used to tie it. Uh, it's super easy to tie. It represents a brown cast really well. All it is is really just brown dubbing on a black head. I have a couple other lighter tan canvas, uh, caddises. A pink squirrel also represents that, really. I mean, it's just a pink on the tan. Uh, all it is is just a cased bug on the rocks. So that's another thing I like to use. And then lastly, even this time of year, you just gotta go off some imitation type flies, um, like a Frenchie, Spanish bullet. They kind of look like a midge or a pheasant tail, but they're really just attracting nymphs. They look like a bug definitely to the fish, but they're not really representing one thing exactly. Um, it's something called a hot pink squirrel I like a lot. That is a really good representative of that is also. And then, you know, earlier in the spring, a couple weeks ago, I still was using scuds heavily. I love scuds here. Rainbows love them. And, uh, especially Iowa and Minnesota. And then the browns still love them too, especially when you're fishing smaller spring creek water where there's a lot of vegetation on the water. So back behind me here, which we'll cut to a clip of me fishing earlier, is what I would say an ideal riffle slash run that in the driftless. You have it, fast water drops down, it goes right into a three foot poolish run. Now the deep, deep slow pools here aren't really conductive for uh, nymphing because well, first off, there's not moving water. And people gotta realize this about the driftless. A lot of people come down here and say, oh, the fish are so skittish, the water's so clear. Don't fish the still water unless you're mousing or you're there, you see fish rising, you stealthily can. You gotta fish the moving water, especially if you're nymphing. Moving water, you can't see the fish, but they can't see you, and that's the way to go. And a lot of people get attracted to these big pools and they see fish in there. Well, just as many fish are gonna be in the riffles. And a lot of the fish in those pools, unless you see them rising, they're not feeding, they're just sitting there. The fish in the riffles and runs are actively feeding. And I like to typically more in the winter time, fish slower water because the fish don't want to waste so much energy. But now by now when it starts warming up, I like to work some really fast stuff. And especially for you know smaller browns and uh, rainbows, even big rainbows, people will forget about it, but as long as the water, in my opinion, is even halfway up to your kneecap and there's a pocket or rock they can hide behind, they'll hold there. I'll show you some spots where you, I've caught in some nice fish that, you know, it's shallow, it's shallow. A lot of people forget about that. So it really is good to show fish the fast water. So I'll show you some clips of me fishing some really shallower fast stuff too. But fish the fast water, it, it really it really is good. Uh, lastly, another another thing I like to mention is weight. A lot of guys, you know, they do like weight and a lot of guys hate it because of the casting. It's kind of a catch 22. What I would say is uh, in the winter time when the fish are deeper in some of those runs and pools or sometimes later in the summer, I will use it. Size six or size four, I usually won't go bigger than that. Usually just one or two. Um, People complain, oh, it messes my cat stuff. Well, a lot of times when the fish are in those deeper pools, it's not gonna be as stealthy, so you can kinda just do roll casts. You don't need to do these big 10-2 casts, like I said. And a lot of guys get caught up in that, and I think that's why they hate on the weights. I don't use it unless I have to. You can buy tungsten flies, you can set your indicator deeper. Two tungsten flies should really get you down, if you're unless you're fishing over three and a half, four foot runs. You know, or it's super fast water, and you only have a small section you really wanna hit. In my opinion, it's uh, in my opinion, weights are valuable. There's a time and place for them, but they're not really a necessity and you don't need them a lot of the time. I would say there are very few occasions where I use them, even today. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I didn't go over everything. I just did a uh, few gear tips and stuff just to get people started. If you guys want another video more on like mending or uh, you know reading water, just let me know. I'll be back to the venture style videos. I missed kind of last week, so I'm doing another video Tuesday, and that will be back to streamer fishing, some browns. And then hopefully some steelhead coming on the way. So stay subscribed, like the video, and uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you think.